Let me ask you this about, uh, you know, one of the things that that um, uh, was revealed in the past week was that Mueller has gone to Facebook and supposedly, and you seem to be skeptical about this uh, based upon what I've read of yours, that he would have needed a warrant to get this information from Facebook. And one of the, just to, just to give some background for people, the theories that has, has come out is that that collusion, to the extent that there was any, could have been a uh, targeting by uh, Cambridge Analytics or Analytica, I guess, which was the uh, Mercer Bannon owned, uh, uh, I guess, uh, data firm. And they provided essentially the coordinates. This is these are the people you need to hit. And the um, the Russians, whatever that means, um, provided sort of the manpower to flood these Facebook feeds. And, and before anybody, the collusion theory, uh, who knows? But the idea that you can impact uh, voter behavior via Facebook is is well um, has been uh, that that premise has been tested. There was a, an experiment, I guess, in in uh, in 2010 in the 2010 election that um, like moved several hundred thousand voters. Uh, Three hundred forty thousand people extra turned out to vote in the 2010 congressional races because of Facebook messages. So there is reason to believe that this would be a decent strategy, but not necessarily one that was taken up by. Uh, Cambridge Analytics or Russians, but but give me your sense of 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 these stories that have broken about it. Well, I um, and and before people attack Facebook too much, too much, um, Obama would not have gotten elected without his Facebook work. I mean, he 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 really led the way on precisely what Trump did to suppress turnout, but he used it to increase turnout. And so it, there's an, there is a good side to this Facebook stuff that we should remember as we talk about it. Right. Um, I, you know, I think here's the thing about the Facebook stuff. I th- it, uh, a, I think that we'll find more interesting connections with Twitter. And thus far, Twitter has not offered up any data. Um, and that, that I, that's a little bit, I mean, Twitter has a much smaller footprint, but I think that's where, that's where um, Russian coached influencers really pushed other influencers uh, to, to take up certain memes. That's a lot harder to track, but my suspicion is, and I would throw in 4chan there, that you need to see how anonymous people really planted these memes that then turned into Pizzagate. Um, and, and that's one of the things that I think we need to trace back, and we haven't done that yet. What we know thus far about Facebook is Facebook says $100,000 in ads were paid for by this troll farm in St. Petersburg. And everyone says, well, you can do a lot with $100,000, and that is true, except that ignores the scope of the spending in this election. So Hillary ran a $1 billion campaign. She spent millions of dollars. She had 200 people on her digital campaign, not including um, David Brock, who had his own online crowd. Right. Uh, you can argue that Hillary's spending on those things was poorly spent, and I would argue that. Uh, but when we're talking the scale of this election, to suggest $100,000 is more than throwing matches on top of the bonfire that Republicans were already spending um, needs more evidence. And the evidence we have thus far on the actual ads tied to that troll farm is they were that there's no way you could argue they were effective for the election. They, you know, one of them got four people to turn out to an anti-immigrant march in Idaho. That's not a good thing. I'm not defending that. But you're not going to swing a, a, a presidential election by changing the behavior of four people in Idaho. It's the third most Republican state, right? I'm interested in what happened in Michigan and Wisconsin um, because it is true that Facebook appeals in Michigan and Wisconsin probably could be enough to flip those states because the states were so close. You could argue the same is true in Pennsylvania. The, the thing is that Trump has already said they paid for those. Trump has already bragged about sending out those. And they're not, those aren't ad per se. Those are dark ads. So A, you're not seeing them. But B, 
Trump has already take, taken credit for them, and he took credit for them based on the enormous spending. And again, this is why I point to scale, based on the enormous uh, spending of the Mercers. Right. So we know where some of that came from. And why the other would, thing I pointed why would, let me just ask, like, what I don't understand is, I mean, I understand the idea of like, look, we have this targeting information and but we just don't have the manpower to sort of like create all these fake accounts that would actually be staffed by real people. And so I understand the idea that like maybe you would go to a uh, I don't know, you know, your buddies who stole all those credit cards, you know, that you're hanging around with in, uh, you know, Joey No Socks's crew or Felix Sater's crew, you know, in Macedonia or Russia, wherever it is, and just be like, hey, can you get those guys who steal all those credit cards and do the phishing uh, emails, can you get them to just be fake Facebook guys? I can understand why you would need the stat, like the human, like the bodies, but it seems to me like $100,000, why would you need Russia to do that on your behalf? Right. I mean, you can't find somebody to do. You got the money. You can't get the Mercers to pay that money. Right. And that's the point I keep making is like, again, the scale of money that was already sloshing around here is so vast that I don't I mean, Trump was he ran his election on on the cheap. It is true. And that's partly because the press gave him so much free advertising. But I you know, I don't think it was money. And then the other thing that I, I keep pointing out. We already know where the collusion happened. We know. Um, and, and that is that the, the figure, Guccifer 2.0, who has been, you know, the, the intelligence community says he was a Russian front, shared a bunch of state-level DTRIP, so DCCC, DCCC, the Congressional Committee, documents uh, such that they came out in the state where they would affect the election. And some of that data was actually useful for targeting. And so I think we're thinking of it entirely wrong. The notion that you couldn't figure out targeting the Russians couldn't unless they got direction from Trump. Um, it is true. Trump did his targeting far better than Hillary in this election. So you could argue that. But we already know that the Russians were taking information they stole from Hillary and the Democrats and making it available to Republicans. So I suspect that the that the direction went in the opposite direction that the russians stole information from democrats and provided useful information that would be useful for targeting to republicans that's where i think it went to can you just for for those of us who who aren't uh you know uh, deeply immersed in this um tell us just briefly who is guccifer and how do we know that 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 guccifer was um, uh, directed by the Russians in some fashion. So Guccifer 2.0 is, um, somebody started a WordPress blog the day after the Washington Post first revealed that um, a security contractor called CrowdStrike was in the DNC servers. So the very next day, this WordPress blog comes out uh, somebody named Guccifer 2.0 who was naming himself after an earlier hacker who had targeted Hillary. Um, says, it was me, it wasn't the Russians, but did certain things like uh, leaving meta, deliberately left metadata uh, to leave Cyrillic, to leave a tribute to the head of the FSB, the inventor of the FSB, basically. Um, and what that first blog post did was prove the claims that uh, the DNC and CrowdStrike made to Washington Post were wrong. Um, they said only two documents were taken. Somebody shows up the next day and says, look at all these documents I, I've got. Now, what's interesting is none of those documents were DNC documents. Those were actually Podesta and probably Hillary documents. So we now know that that person was not only proving uh, DNC and CrowdStrike wrong, but was also saying, look, I've got a ton more documents than you know about or that you're admitting to. Um, why do we know that person is, is Russian? Well, I mean, this is, this is one of the most contentious things, is there are skeptics who say Guccifer was probably X, Y, or Z, somebody else trying to blame the Russians. Um, if you look at Guccifer's later behavior, again, I said that that entity was leaking DTRIP documents. That would seem to rule out a Bernie supporter 
it would seem to rule out the DNC. It would seem to rule out CrowdStrike. They have no incentive to help Republicans get elected and no incentive to release those documents. Um, Guccifer 2.0, right before the election, was um, was uh, basically elevating Russian means. So at that point, uh, Guccifer 2.0 said, well, Hillary's going to try and tamper with the election. I'm going to prevent it. Any of you hackers want to help me do X, Y, and Z? We know that at the time, or we've been told, again, we're trusting the IC on this, but again, this I think there is there is more evidence now in the public record to support. We know that the Russians were also trying to hack um, things like voting books, things that could make it hard and may have in North Carolina, things that could make it harder. You could You could basically slow down the voting in more democratic areas. Mm. Um, Durham County, which is the most democratic area in North Carolina, had their polling books work funny. And so just in that county, they switched to paper. The entire rest of the state still using the electronic book. Durham County, the most democratic part of the state, they're using paper. It's, it is creating lines. And that is if you want to, if you want to affect elections, that's how you do it. I mean, that's how the Republicans do it too, is they make right. sure that, you know, that precincts that are predominantly people of color, that they have to show ID and that precincts that are pre- predominantly white don't. And that means it's a lot easier and it takes a lot less time for white people to vote than black people to vote. You know, that they've been doing that in American elections. That's a tried and true uh, process. Uh, we saw it in 2004 in Ohio. And I mean, you, I assume you see it other places, too, but it's most prominent in these states that end up being swing states where you see... Oh, we used to have four uh, voting machines there. Now we only have two because one, two broke, and we didn't have time to fix them or something. Oops. Right. Right. Yeah. And so, I mean, that's sort of so. Anyway, that is my short case for Guccifer 2.0 being Russian. Okay. Um, I think there's more there. I think, and I and I, I'm happy. I'm happy to agree with the skeptics that I think some of the initial things said about Guccifer 2.0 were rash and should be revisited and people should admit that they made the wrong statements. Um, so I, you know, I, I'm not, I don't at all dismiss the skepticism out of, out of bound. I just, I think the case is still persuasive that Gustavur 2.0 is tied to the Russians. Okay. So um, your point being that we don't, um, we already, that is at least at the very least a, a significant point of, of, uh, uh, of collusion and, you know, creating other um, theories um, are are secondary at this point because you have the at least the evidence there. But that's that is, you know, it's one thing to get it to like, you know, the, the people who got that um, that information, they didn't know they were dealing with um, a Russian. Right. And, you know, to the extent that there's. I mean, and we should make this clear that, like, you know, obviously the United States government has uh, influenced other elections. I don't know if they've done something to this effect, uh, but they certainly have gone as far as maybe, you know, uh, in certain places, getting rid of the opposition, uh, like literally. Um, but be that as it may, the, there's, a, there's not necessarily a sort of two, uh, you know, two parties g- entering into an agreement with both an awareness of who each other was in this instance, right? I mean, so that's that's what, what Mueller needs to, f- to find on some level. Right, and one of the easier, one of the more interesting areas that he presumably is pursuing, pursuing is that um, there was this story about um, a now deceased uh, Republican. Am I, am I allowed to say the RF word on this? I forget. RF? Um, Oh, Ratfuck. Yes. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay, good, because I got in trouble saying it on TV. Um, so this this rat fucker who goes back to the Clinton days, the Bill Clinton days, um, was looking for the Clinton Foundation emails and was actually right. approaching Russian hackers for it. Um, the people who were involved with him in it include Roger Stone, include Chuck Johnson, who has close ties to the White House. So it includes this kind of this network of rat fuckers, some young, some, you know, Roger Stone, who's been rat fucking longer than Vladimir Putin. And they were in discussions with Guccifer 2.0 as well. So you, you have there, I think, clear cases where people were knowingly soliciting Russians um, for some kind of dirt against Hillary. 
And we don't hear as much about that. Uh, we may soon, because Roger Stone, I think, is testifying this week to Congress. But um, but that is an area where you have actual GOP rat fuckers who have some, you know, some plausible deniability with the campaign, but we're clearly working on behalf of the campaign who are reaching out to known Russian entities trying to get more dirt on Hillary. Hi, folks. Sam Cedar here. We still need your help on our Patreon page. YouTube ads have come back, but not nearly as much as we had before. So if you can help us out, any little bit helps. Head over to our Patreon page right at this URL, and you'll help us keep helping you by making videos.